In the pursuit of high fidelity audio, there's almost no limit of ways to get things sounding just a, a little bit better. In my short time down this rabbit hole, I've noticed some of these hi-fi audio tweaks to be part feeling, part science, and sometimes just plain wackadoo. Case in point, this rather heavy metal and rubber doorstop is supposed to help cut down on vibrations and actually make things sound better. Or so it may seem. Today, my friends, we're going to chase down that better bit of sound with a USB audio bridge, otherwise known as a digital to digital converter. Does it make a difference here or? Wackadoo. This is my experience and review of the Singer SU6. <laughs> What does a digital to digital converter do and why might you want one? First off, it allows you to transfer a digital signal to other forms of digital output, you know, like Toslink, BNC, Coaxial, I2S, etc. Additionally, it allows you to run multiple DACs from a single source at the same time. So those of you who are this far down the rabbit hole with multiple DACs, you can swap between them seamlessly. Another reason is to attract the ladies. They love a good DDC. You will be swimming, swimming in women, just copious. They're just gonna be like zombies, like trying to get in your house, like knocking down the door. I need that DDC. I wanna to listen to clean audio. Give it. Most importantly, and in the scope of this review, a digital to digital converter is supposed to clean up noise from a USB source and then pass that cleaner digital audio signal over to your DAC or multiple DACs. Look at it this way. The Singer SU6 is purposely built for clean digital audio, whereas your computer is most certainly not. So the Singer SU6 that I'm reviewing today uses temperature controlled clock management. In digital audio, this comes in clutch because it turns out that timing is actually really important. Thermal compensated clocks are much more accurate. If any of you guys are into watches, you may have heard about the Citizen Caliber 0100, which uses a thermal compensated quartz and rated to be off by no more than one second per year. This is crazy considering the average G-Shock needs to be adjusted, you know, every month or so in order to be relied upon. Now, I don't know what the Singer's clocks are rated at specifically, but they're definitely gonna be more accurate than regular clock variants because they're not affected by external temperatures. And this is sort of a big deal. Now your average computer on the other hand does not use this technology. To make things even worse, they have multiple clocks running simultaneously. They interfere with the audio clock causing jitter, which you really don't want disrupting your audio chain. Another problem inside the computer is the transfer of acoustic noise from fans, GPUs, hard disks, and so on. I've gone into this in more detail in other videos, but to put it simply, a computer is just not an ideal solution for those of you chasing clean, high fidelity audio. A DDC like the SU6 connected to said computer is supposed to mitigate this. Before we get into whether or not it does, Let's take a closer look at the SU6 and what comes packed in the box. I should mention that this footage was taken on April 4th of 2022, so I guess this could be considered a long-term review. So, we've got a USB cable, the Singer little handbook, the unit itself, and the power adapter. I was actually really surprised. There's no cable. There's no power cable for this. So those of you interested in buying one of these, make sure you have an extra. Uh, I mean, I've got tons lying around that I've never even unraveled. So it's fine in my case, but if you're gonna order one of these, just govern yourselves accordingly. The only input here is a single USB 2.0 Type-B port. Now, for some of you this won't be much of an issue, but for me at least, this is a bit of a letdown. I'd love to be able to use a Singer with devices like the Wii Pro or the Wii Mini or anything else that outputs digital audio through coax or optical. 
you're rather limited with just a USB. There are a lot of outputs covering pretty much any scenario you want to throw at it though, including dual I2S ports, which is actually really cool. I can see myself using those to compare DACs, so they're both on equal footing. Ooh, this is actually, this is interesting here. Dip switches. The dip switches on the bottom are there to be configured for various I2S protocols. While bloody confusing, this is also great as I2S is still not standardized and you won't be locked out of using the thing with different DACs. And here's the front. No buttons. This is not touch sensitive. As far as aesthetics are concerned, the SU6 isn't gonna win any beauty contests. It's a simple black metal box with blue LEDs on the front. There are no options to turn off those LEDs short of covering them with tape or maybe putting something in front of the unit. The SU6 also has no buttons. You just plug it in and it simply does its thing. The power. Singer uses an ultra low noise super capacitor power supply system. Say that 10 times fast. It takes a minute after you plug the unit in to store enough power to run the audio bridge. Because of this, the SU6 also keeps working for a bit after the unit's unplugged. All right, on to listening impressions. So I tested the SU6 in multiple setups and scenarios, but the reason I bought the Singer DDC in the first place was because I was curious if it would improve fidelity coming out of my Blue Sound node. So this is where we're gonna start. So I connected the Singer SU6 into my office setup. This includes a Hegel H190 integrated amplifier, KEF LS50 Meta speakers and KC62 subwoofer, the Blue Sound Node 2021 version. The Core Mojo 2's DAC was also used here because I prefer it over Hegel's internal. So with all of that set up, I began my listening test and alternated between the SU6 in and out of the audio chain to see if I could hear a difference. I immediately began to notice that differences are subtle, but they are there. The SU6 produces a cleaner, darker background. Instruments and vocals have more of a pocket around them, and they're a bit more clearly defined in the track Lazy Eye. I'm hearing the same sort of thing in White Winter Hymnal. The acoustic guitar just stands out a little bit more when the SU6 is in the audio chain. It's subtle, but still noticeable. Every time the SU6 was in use, there seemed to be audible benefits. I noticed that the lead vocalist's voice was cleaner and more defined in the track The Funeral by Band of Horses and also heard better separation with improved soundstage in the track Zaka. So yeah, I concluded that the SU6 does improve the sound out of Blue Sound's note. It's as simple as that. All right, so next I moved the Singer SU6 down here into my main listening room. Uh, the goal here was to find out whether the Singer SU6 improved upon higher end gear. So keep in mind, I'm gonna be using the Lumen U2 Mini and when I compared that streamer to the Blue Sound node, I did notice a bump up in sound quality. So what I wanted to find out here is whether that shelf of sound quality with the Lumen U2 Mini can be, again, improved upon with the Singer audio bridge. So let's find out. I plugged a Supra USB cable from the Lumen streamer to the SU6 and an AudioQuest HDMI cable to my Denifrips Venus 2. I left the AES connection between my Lumen U2 Mini and Venus 2 so I could just switch back and forth between the inputs. Now I have the Venus 2 connected to my Hegel H390 integrated amplifier. I'm working on that review if you're interested, so make sure you're subscribed for that. Now, to be honest with you guys, I went into this part of my research thinking I'd probably not notice any difference. But to my surprise, I actually preferred music coming out of the SU6. It just seemed marginally better. There was perceivably more of a sense of depth and space. Bass was a little punchier, background was a little blacker. 
It was a small difference, mind you, but enough to make me gravitate towards using the SU-6 going through I-2S on my Venus. Now, I wonder how much of this difference can be attributed to the SU-6 cleaning up the signal from the U-2 Mini, or if it's just that I'm going through I-2S now via the SU-6's bridge, arguably the best connection on my DAC. That's one thing I couldn't do on the U-2 Mini before because it doesn't have I-2S. That was one of my complaints about the streamer. In any case, I've reached a new plateau with the Singzer in my main setup here. All right, I gotta mention the law of diminishing returns here because the difference is far from night and day. That is, until you decide to use a computer as your streaming source and compare that with and without the Singzer. So testing both my loudspeaker and headphone setups, I A-B'd with and without the SU6 in the sound chain. Streaming was done from my M1 Mac Mini using Room. I felt like some Michael Jackson, so I popped on his Thriller album. The Girl Is Mine with Paul McCartney eventually came on. And going back and forth, I can't help but notice that this is the worst song on Michael Jackson's Thriller album. Don't get me wrong, this is one of the best albums of all time. It's a catchy song with gobs of talent behind the recording, and that's more than I can say about you know 90% of the stuff released today. But I just don't believe the narrative here. They seem to be after the same girl, but it gets about as intense as a tickle fight in a bubble bath. If I were facing off against my love rival, you know, the guy standing in the way of the potential woman of my dreams, you'd be damn sure I'd put up more of a fight. Maybe something worthy of the Kumite. But Mike and Paul's well-mannered banter comes across as disingenuous and awkwardly civilized. Grow a pair, guys. I swear, I picture the two of them brushing each other's hair while singing this in the studio. To add insult to injury, I've had this frickin' track in my head for three days straight. At an attempt at redemption, I've found the polite pair at it once again in the 2015 remaster, Say Say Say. And as my blood pressure levels went back down, I noticed that music sounded so much better through the Singzer SU6. In fact, everything else I listened to was to the same effect. The difference was super obvious whether I was on my loudspeaker or headphone setup. Guys, if you're streaming from a computer, I feel the SU6 is a no-brainer here. This is bread and butter territory for the Singzer SU6 in my opinion. Better imaging, blacker backgrounds, better separation, and improved soundstage, both width and depth as well. All of the things I basically noticed in my other comparisons, but way more obvious in this scenario. All right, here's my pros and cons list. You may want to pause here because this is pretty important stuff. Also, there could be a test at the end of the video, so make sure you pay attention. So like I touched on earlier, there really are three main use cases for the Singzer SU6. One, as an audio companion to your computer. Let's say you're getting most of your music from BitPerfect software off of your PC or your Mac. Maybe you just prefer your computer as an interface, or maybe you want to get the cleanest audio without buying a standalone streamer. The SU6 makes the most sense here and was the biggest, most noticeable jump in sound quality. Number two, the AB DAC comparer guy, or the DAC flavorist, if you will. If you're dead set on the exciting prospect of comparing DACs, or enjoy running and switching between multiple DACs, I don't know, maybe you're running an R2R or in a Delta Sigma, the Singzer allows you to do this easily and seamlessly. Those of you who fall into this category certainly know who you are, and this bit of kit can become essential. Number three, we're gonna call that extra five to 10 percentist. And that's those of you that just want the best, cleanest digital signal possible in your audio chain. Now, is this a necessity for Blue Sound Node and other set streamers? No, 
Absolutely not. But if you're going down this rabbit hole and want that extra little bit, the Singer SU6 could be your next step. But it's a questionable value proposition if only used with a dedicated streamer. Now, I'm not saying that I won't use it this way now that I've heard the results, but don't necessarily go and do what I do. Honestly, I'm a bit of a wackadoo. So in the end, I can say with certainty that the SU6 does improve sound quality. It may not have been a huge difference in every single scenario, but a difference was always noticed nonetheless. And with that, the Singer SU6 audio bridge comes fully recommended from this channel. I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and get subscribed, and I will see you guys soon. She's mine. My, my. Ba-boom, ba-boom, boom. She's mine.